Yeah. And in that Drake family, you always pass to the left-hand side, right? Yeah. Let me talk to you. To the left-hand side. Left-hand side. Yeah. 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 Let me talk to you. To the left-hand side. Left-hand side. Yeah. 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 Glenn Gilbert Netty. Glenn Gilbert Netty. So right now you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh yeah. Whoa, past the duchy indeed. Welcome back everybody to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans brought to you by the Impact Lounge. This is Trent along with my co-host Kyle. Kyle, what's going on? Bah. 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 What's up, Trent? I hope the Impact Tribe had a great Thanksgiving. And you yourself, Trent, you and you and the Zuberis got together. You guys had a nice Thanksgiving or what? Oh, dude. Thanksgiving in uh in my house is always the holiday. But however, this year I was orphaned, man. I gotta I gotta just take a second and get the get the violins out for this one. My parents, who every year we throw the big Thanksgiving party at our house, my parents decided they're going to go spend the holiday in, in Las Vegas with a bunch of their buddies. So they were out there with a bunch of old folks, and they were out there hanging out in Las Vegas, living it up while I was a Thanksgiving orphan. And, uh, you know, my sister even drove in from L.A. and met them up. I was, I was a lone wolf out here, man. They left me, they left me hanging. So, uh, well, they all went to Las Vegas a little late. They, they could have gone last week, two weeks ago, and caught Impact Wrestling Live. You know, believe me, the thought crossed my mind. It really did. It really did. It's a shame that they couldn't watch Impact. But uh, definitely, uh, girlfriend came through, put me on with her family, and I was, uh, I was saved. I was saved. What about you? Ah, the usual shtick, the usual routine. Got together with the family, you know. Pounded down some drinks, eating some turkey. The usual. That's what the it's huge. all about. You get any, you get any Black Friday sales uh, going on in there? Hell, you got any shopping done? No, no, none of that. I, I'm I'm too much of a degenerate to do any of that. You know, I I'm the type of guy I like to do my shopping in the last hour. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah. I uh first time ever did Black Friday shopping. I bought a bunch of shit I don't need, but uh but then I kind of got excited and I feel justifying that i do need it one thing i was bummed about kyle is that shop impact did not do a black friday sale other than the they did 20 percent off the las vegas tapings for february but no no uh black friday sale on the on the website this year man usually they they kill it on black friday i don't know if you ever bought bought merch uh during black friday at shopimpact.com, but there was nothing on there man they did not do a sale this year a little bummed out a little bummed out i gotta say they got to get Don up. West back to work. That's what that means. I, yeah, dude. I was I, usually I clean up every year around around. Uh, I'm, maybe they'll do a Cyber Monday thing. I don't know. Uh, they haven't said anything. Usually they announce it by now, but uh, uh, nothing, man. I was really shocked that there was not a huge new sale for uh to, for the holiday. But maybe they'll throw something in December, maybe a Christmas sale because uh, a couple of T-shirts I wouldn't mind getting. You know, that new Cross T-shirts calling my name. I should have bought it in uh, New York for Bound for Glory, but. That's that's one of the regrets I got, and by that year I bought the program, the uh, 2018 show program. But hopefully, we'll see. Kyle, if they have a sale, I'm gonna buy you a t-shirt too. Mystery They've got shirt. a couple brand new t-shirts on there. I just saw they added a new Rich Swan t-shirt yesterday. Two of them. They got a pink one as well. If you don't want oh, the, they did? yeah. If that. you don't, if you don't want the regular black t-shirt, you want to spice it up a little. Hey, uh, get the pink shirt. Get that for your lady, whatever. I did not see the. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Rich Swan t-shirt with the wings on it. It's cool. That's brand new. Pink and black. Yeah, they got to keep up with the new stuff at uh, Shop Impact. New new merch, new shirts. We want it all, baby. All the new stuff. I like it. I like, yeah, it looks like there's some new ones coming. There's a Slammiversary shirt coming. Uh, Bounty Hunter. There's no photo for these yet. They're just listed. Yeah, I noticed up. that. Uh, a few of the new items they don't have pictures up for. No. Just uh, listings. So Impact Tribe, uh, stay on the lookout at ShopImpact.com. Looks like a lot of new stuff is coming. Right in time for Christmas, Trent. 
right in time for Christmas. And that's when I clean up, man. But I did notice one thing on the website. They also removed the clearance section. So I think they finally might be all out of that old stuff, of those old T-shirts. Man, I used to clean up and give those out as gifts and whatnot, you know, some of those $5 shirts. I think they're officially sold out, man. That is cleaned up. That was the oh, last. Right. You, you couldn't pay people to wear some of those old, ugly TNA shirts yeah. on that website. Don't even deny it. Some I of those old shirts are hideous. We've joked I, about it before. Oh yeah, some of them were bad. Believe me, I own quite a few. Uh, the ones, the good ones. But I, I was, you know, I was, I was getting a couple of five dollar shirts, giving them out to some people. As uh, last year, I cleaned up on those, man. I, I stocking stuffed a lot of those for people, and they were cool. Impact Tribe, you know it. All your holiday shopping. What better uh, way to? Hook up your friends and family members than getting them gifts from Impact Wrestling. How about this? I'm going to throw a thing to the Impact Tribe. What is your favorite piece of Impact slash TNA merchandise that you own? T-shirt, whatever it is. I'm going to go with mine. I really love, uh, uh, I like, I like the, new, I got the new logo shirt. Not the new logo, I got the one with the, uh, the Anthem with the uh, six-sided shirt. I like that one a lot. It fits perfectly. I actually wore it to the last Hemi show. Uh, so I got that on stage. And, um... I like that one, and Kyle. I also like this old TNA one with the with the wing print all over it, which you hate. I think you we talked about this shirt. You hated, absolutely hated. You said it's hideous. I love that shirt though. It's so comfortable. So you comfortable. know what, Trent? Uh, it's it's the holidays. I'm in the spirit of giving. Uh, before we move on here and get into the review, I got to yeah. throw it out there, Trent. How about this? How about this? Impact Tribe loungers. I'm putting it out there right now. I want you to pick. Any piece of merchandise on the shopimpact.com. And then I want you to go in the comments here and write a nice letter to me and Trent and tell us why you deserve that piece of merchandise and why me and Trent mm. or Trent's PayPal account, Trent's <laughs> money, but why why Trent should buy it for you. And we will pick <laughs> Trent against that. We will pick somebody, a lucky winner, and we'll buy them a piece of impact merchandise for the holidays. Why not? For Christmas. You know, I love how you do this when the five dollar clearance section is gone. Thanks a lot, Kyle. You it, just it's stuck us. Trent's PayPal. Thanks, Trent. You're you stuck. Safe. Yeah, you stuck me with twenty five bucks. All right, all right. You know what, guys? Tribe, go ahead, go ahead and do it. We'd love to hear it. It is the the the, the holiday season, the season for giving. You guys have been giving us a lot. It's our time to give back. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Trent. And before we get into the review here, let me just remind the the tribe one time here. Uh, this Friday, November 30th, uh, Gold Rush streaming live on Twitch. That's right, folks. Uh, Impact Gold Rush. Impact's teaming up with BTW Wrestling for this one. Uh, mm. A few matches already out there. Uh, Johnny Impact versus Eli Drake for the Impact World Heavyweight Championship. You got Tessa Blanchard versus Kira Hogan in a non-title match. Brian Cage versus Moose. OVE versus the Freaks. I don't know who the Freaks are. They sound like some Freaks, though. Eddie Edwards versus BTW heavyweight champion, the jackpot, Scotty Ringer, and Matt Seidel versus Rich Swan. Uh, don't miss it. Uh, this Friday, November 30th, live on Impact's Twitch channel, Gold Rush. That's actually a pretty badass card, dude. Like, <laughs> you named some badass matches there. I, I should get, if I'm home Friday, I'm watching that. Hey, or hey, and hey, hey, loungers, uh, tribe members, if you're in California, tickets are still available. BTWWrestling.com. Get your tickets right now. They did another uh, one night only with those guys before, and it was fun. So that they got a cool venue. If it's the same venue they used before, cool, very lively venue. Good crowd, too. So, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. definitely yeah. get and, out there, guys. And they got another one. They have another one with the same company. Uh, Saturday, December 1st, they're doing one night only Back to Cali. Now, Back to Cali is a taping. They're going to air it you know, at a future date on Twitch. Like, uh, the Gold Rush that's happening on November 30th, that is going to be streamed live on Twitch. But the December 1st show, Back to Cali, that is strictly a taping. But you can get your tickets for that one as well at btwwrestling.com. So Impact Tribe, support Impact uh, on their one-night-only ventures outside of the normal Impact TV show and Impact standard pay-per-view television. You got, you got to stay in tune with the one-night-onlys, right, Trent? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's so many of them. I'm a little behind. You know, I do buy the DVDs also. I even got the GWN and the Twitch. I mean, I'm bombarded with Impact stuff. I'm just a little behind on the One Night Onlys. Somebody was dogging me, though, about the One Night Onlys and owning all those. And uh, because they don't, you know, they don't really follow storyline. And they're kind of like their own thing. I was getting dogged by somebody about that. Who would do that? 
I don't know. I don't know. But somebody was. Let's put it out there, okay? Somebody was dogging me about it. But uh, I like them. They're just kind of like watching a cool indie show, you know, and with your your favorite Impact folks. Or just like a house show. I shouldn't say indie show. It's a house show. It's like watching a house show on on TV. So that, you remember I, as a kid back in the day, Trent, when you would get the Coliseum videotapes? Yeah. I, do. I used to what, rent them that's all. That's what One Night Only is to me. 100%. I used to rent them all, man. I That's exactly what they are to me. And get them on a Friday night. You know, I used to be a kid, go on a Friday night, go rent them. That's what it is now. I, I just stream it on Twitch. So it's the principle is the same, guys. The principle is the same. Absolutely. Check that out. The one night only's are a lot of fun. You know so. what else is a lot of fun, Trent? What's that? This week's Thanksgiving special, the Eli Drake Gravy Train Turkey Trot. Let's talk about it. The second annual second Eli annual. Drake's Gravy Train Turkey turkey trot okay so somewhere along the lines here trent we changed the impact turkey bowl to the eli drake gravy train turkey trot but it's still the same thing right it's still technically the turkey bowl same thing okay. same thing yeah all right same thing it's just a new fresh spin on it you know last year we talked about uh papa drake's gravy so uh you know now it, it turned into eli's thing man so it was fun so you know there was one guys there was one match on the show and it it was all story. There was some flashback uh, GWN flashbacks to old um, old turkey bowls, but we you know we're, we built the entire episode to one match. A lot of backstage segments. Your team captains for the two uh, the two sides were Eli Drake and Falaba, and uh, Falaba was fantastic. Him and KM KM was basically translating for Ba, which was uh, which was funny because I don't know. I just love watching Falaba. Make his facial expressions and KM try to figure it out. But dude, Eli Drake, tell me, was he not money on this with with Mackenzie Mitchell? Was he not just amazing? He Hilarious. killed it. He killed it. Everybody at home right now has got that. They got it all set up. They're enjoying themselves, enjoying a nice meal, getting that full belly. You know, when it's done, you just unzip the pants, kind of sit back, you're like ah, so full. And guess what? Now tonight, you're gonna watch all these men. All these women come out here, entertain you for good whole, what, two hours in the greatest extravaganza you've ever seen? Happy Thanksgiving, dummies, courtesy of Eli Drake. Why? Because it's the Eli Drake Gravy Train Turkey Trot. Yeah! And in that Drake family, you always pass that gravy to the left-hand side, right? The guy in the microphone is great. I was, uh, I was talking to, actually, I was talking to AEW management about, you know, we got to get, get Eli Drake over here, man. Nobody's brought him into the Midwest yet. He's pretty much on the coast. You know, he stays on the coast, uh, you know, east and west. And they're like, well, you know, he's, he's availability. And they're like, what, you know, what do we do with him? I said, dude, give him a microphone. Give him, that's all you got to do. You know, it doesn't matter what his match is. Give him a microphone. That's all you got to do. Let let it work itself out. Let me talk to you. But, uh, dude, I, I would love to bring Eli Drake in uh, to work with him, man. That guy, I just, all you need to do is put him on a microphone. And this thing with Mackenzie Mitchell was, was he, him in six segments on a microphone. How do you, how do you lose? Let me talk to you. Every time Eli Drake is on the microphone, you know, in front of the camera, he's, he's the shining star. That, that's just what he does always. I'm not surprised here, but he totally knocked it out of the park. But it, I got to give uh, also some props to Follow Ba. Uh, I got to say, before Eli Drake took the microphone, Follow Ba spoke to Mackenzie there for a second. And uh, I love the Ba language, man. I really do. I'm starting to pick up on it. Uh, I can't translate it as well as KM, but I'm starting to pick up on the Ba, Ba, Ba. ba. Ba's first pick was KM. Ba. Which, which. <laughs> By hook or by crook, and the chances of that happening, I think I think Cam even said he should go buy a lottery ticket, or somebody said something about like, or he should go, he should go pull, you know, put some money out and gamble because he's he's feeling lucky because Cam was his first pick, and then uh, for Team Drake, Jake Christ was his first pick, and you like that particular uh, segment where uh, OVE walked up on Drake. You want to tell? You want to talk about that for a oh, second? Oh, I, I thought I just thought it was funny how Mini Draw was Mini Drake for just a second there. It was great. Mini, mini draw. I, I, I'm really curious where this goes. The the mini draw thing. I'm, I really want to know where they're going with just building Jake as this like this mirror copycat, kind of overexcited dweeb. You know whatever they're doing with him. It, it sounds. It looks funny already. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, next next round, next round on the picks. 
was a uh, av- this was a shock. This one caught me off guard, and I, I know you mentioned you didn't uh, you weren't familiar with them, but Kiku Taro was the next pick for Team Follow, which blew my mind because uh, that was so unexpected. And uh, Kiku Taro is a Japanese wrestler. He is based out of Las Vegas. But he is a veteran. He's been doing this uh, for a long time in Japan. I think he's wrestled for uh, the Wing Promotion, FMW. I believe, I want to say he did some stuff for uh, Michinoku Pro at some point. But he, he really got into North America with via Chikara and PWG and some Ring of Honor spots. So he's a total Chikara, you know, kind of appeal. The guy's hilarious. He's just like, he's, your, he's basically your... I like to call him like he's your he's your comedy wrestler. He's he's your comic relief guy, you know. And uh, I, I like him, man. He's just, he's a funny guy. He just he's not known to be um not known to be like a serious wrestler. He does a lot of mock spots, like you know he did Kiku Angle for like Kurt Angle one time, and Jushin Thunder Kiku Taro and Brett Kiku Hart. Like he he does he's a goof, you know. That's what he does. So uh, that's that's what he's known for. So he he's perfect for Team Follow. And I'm sure you can just, even though you never weren't familiar with him, Kyle, you were familiar, or you you could appreciate how goofy he was and how well he fit into that team. What do you think? He's no Curry man, but I, I was feeling Kiko Taro. Uh, yeah, it was one of those things where I just wasn't in on the joke. I wasn't in on it. I was unfamiliar with Kiko Taro. I, I embarrassed to say. I, I gotta I gotta get up on my Japanese wrestling a little more. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot out there. You know, we a we lot to follow. It's a lot, lot to follow. Thinking. I mean, I have a hard time following it. You know, honestly, I don't really, don't really follow it. I just pretty much watch Impact, and I, uh, I do AW because I work there. But that's about it. I keep tabs where I can, but not much. So, but Kiku's based in the U.S. You know, he's a, uh, he's a, he's a fun guy to to have on your card. I'm trying to. Remember, I think I saw him at Chikara once. I can't remember if we had him at AW once. I don't remember. This is before I was working there, but. Uh, yeah, just a nice, fun, fun guy. But next pick for Team Drake after that was Oh, Rohit. no, no, Trent, oh, Trent, oh, oh, you, you're oh, skipping oh. over the, my favorite part of the show. The Scarlet Bordeaux talent search promo, uh, the sexy show girls. I don't know who they are. Boy, would I like to see more of them. We should get them dancing in the cages at homecoming. The, the sexy show girls come out with Scarlet. It's just a quick little commercial for the talent search. We see Shark Boy. We see a couple little talent show clips. But, uh, man, uh that Scarlet Bordeaux and her sexy show girls. Oh my God. Those, uh, that segment was like, I think I tweeted at that point. Some people listening might've saw it. Um, I said, find me another wrestling show. That's got the balls to put this on TV. I mean, dude, there were strippers dancing on TV with Scarlet as she was. I was like, dude, no, no wrestling show has the balls to do this in 2018. No way. And I am thankful for impact wrestling. It was great. I love that those girls were looking fantastic. Scarlett was looking fantastic. That was that was great, man. That was a nice little thing to break up what is a, uh, you know, just a kind of a, a light episode as it is. So I, I appreciate it. I'm sure all the guys watching appreciate it. No one's going to complain about that. So uh, then there was way more Scarlet to come after this. So let's stay tuned here. But uh, next pick for Team Drake, we had Rohit Raju. And he walked up. He walked up with uh, Chacha and his uh, Chacha's son, and uh, the uh, God, I can't remember the new guy. What, what what's the new guy's Singh's name? I, I totally am blanking here. Gama Singh Junior. Gama Singh Junior. That we're going with. Uh, he came up and <laughs> my best line, my favorite, one of my favorite lines. I, t- I tweeted this to uh, to Rohit, and he replied, but. Uh, He's like, he's like, I can't wait to have this match is over. I'm gonna have some turkey and you know, stuffing and gravy. And Chacha slaps him, and he's like, "What? It's food. I like food." And it was just, dude, I was tripping laughing because he's just like, "I like food." What is Chacha food? wants nothing to do with the American traditions. He Chacha reiterated he's gonna ruin Thanksgiving tonight, and uh, uh, but yeah, man. But hey. Bro, he likes his Thanksgiving dinner, dude. He's like me. He's a brown guy who appreciates westernized Thanksgiving dinner. So yeah, that's my boy right there. I, I let him know that, too. I sent him a text, and I said, hey. I said, I'm, I'm with you on the – I'm like, that's how I justify shitty diets. I do the same thing when I justify my shitty eating habits in December by yelling, food. I like food. So, Roy Raju. 
And then uh, well, we had another uh, another couple picks here, but in between, uh, I think there was a, was there another flashback there, Kyle. I think there was another flashback, wasn't there? Well, no, 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 Trent. You know, Trent, Trent, you're gonna have to start watching the show if you're gonna host this. You, 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 you're just killing it. You're, you're missing things here, man. But in between there, there was no flashback. Uh, this was actually the second round of uh, favorite Thanksgiving memories. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that's Impact right. Impact roster sharing their uh, favorite Thanksgiving memories. My favorite part of that was they ask uh, Ethan Page, and he looks at him and goes, what the hell are you asking me for? I'm a Canadian. My Thanksgiving was a month ago. He goes, I feel like it's, I feel it's hilarious you're asking a Canadian first. Like, get the hell out of here. I already had mine a month ago. He brushed him off quick. I thought it was hilarious. It's funny. What about you? What's your fair Thanksgiving holiday, Kyle? Let's hear it from you. My favorite Thanksgiving memory? Oh, uh, uh, memory. Memory. So, I'm sorry. I said holly. Memory. Ooh. Ooh. You got you to have one here. Come on, Kyle. You I'm going with Rich Swan. I just love Thanksgiving. You lo- <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what he said. I, I, just, I just love Thanksgiving. I think, uh, I think, you, uh, I think you're biased. I think you're biased because you love Rich. Because Rich Swan is our, uh, he's our, our intro voice to the show. I think you're. Uh, I think you're biased. That's why you you said that. You said with Rich Swan. I, I, I you, can't choose a favorite Thanksgiving, Trent. It's a magical time once a year. <laughs> I love it. It's my. It is my favorite holiday, dude. I I can't. Uh, I can't pick one myself. All right, but anyway. All right, so uh, we go here. After that, we have another pick, another round of picks. Fala has his next pick, and he picks. Alicia Edwards, you got a girl. We got a girl on the team here. Kyle, huh? what do you think? We're, we're we're mixing this up. And then uh, you know, Alicia walks up and she's uh, she's she, she's kind of like you know, nervous, not really sure what to make of it. I remember that she was uh, not really too too excited, but not really too shitty on it either. But uh, looked like Fala was like trying to be Mister Smooth. Got a girl on the team there. I really wish Eddie would have walked up at this point and maybe kind of said something and be like, hey, hey, keep in your pants, guys, or something like that. But we didn't get that. I don't know. What'd you think? You think it was cool to mix up, uh, get, get, get a girl on this team here? I think it fit the theme. It was just random and, and wacky. I mean, e- earlier in the show, uh, Eli Drake's first pick was uh, Katarina. So we're evening it out here. We got Alicia Edwards on this side. You got Katarina on the other side. It works. No, oh, I bet. I, I think I didn't mention uh, Katarina. No, you term. did, Trent. Then you you're really you did, you're really fucking up, man. <laughs> no, I didn't mention Katarina. You did. I did. I, I'm I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and check and uh, double check that. It, you're the host with the most, Trent. You can't be the host and miss this stuff. I I did not I did not mention Katarina. If, if the lounge comes to us for the reviews, Trent, you have to actually watch the show. I I, I apologize. I, I I'm going in a different order here, my friend. I was uh. I was I was going on the order of uh of uh what impact that's anarchy, that comes to That's anarchy. I apologize. I apologize for for being out of order on the picks here, guys. But doesn't matter. It was a Thanksgiving episode. I was laid back with my mind on my my turkey and my turkey on my mind. But uh, all right, well, Katarina was the was one of the picks for Team Drake. I'm I'm just going I'm I'm just going in order. I'm just going with you know girl girl and this and that. I'm building up to something, Kyle. If you know what I'm getting to here, you know I'm getting to a certain pick. There's a certain pick I'm I'm building up to. Doesn't matter if it's in order or not. I'm getting to something here. Come on, cut me some slack. Yeah, hey, I gotta keep you on your feet, man. I gotta keep you on your toes. All right, well, listen, I I uh. I, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate you keeping me in line. But I do recall that Katarina, um, Katarina was a pick for Team Drake. She came in and kind of, kind of got Eli a little, like, little, little glimmer in Eli's eye, which I thought was, uh, I thought was funny. He he looked like he looked like he wasn't sure what to make of it. But hey, you guys got a hot chick on his on his team. He was happy about that. But. Uh, all right, Kyle. Am I? Am I? Am I? Is there one more? Am I wrong here? You want? You want to take the next one? No, you're you good. You're good. You, we're, we're good now. You got Katarina out of the way. Continue, please. Continue. Well, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna live this one down, am I? Oh, uh, you're on probation. <laughs> All right, fair I'm, enough. I'm gonna replace you with Dancing Mike. You keep this up. Man, Dan, you know, Dan, right, real, real quick sidebar. Dancing Mike. <laughs> Dancing Mike came came with the heat, man, and he was. Uh, 
He was all about letting us know about the pizza. He called it Pizza Gate. The whole pizza argument that's been you going on. You didn't even read the YouTube comments from last week. Gummy. It was yeah. a light week. We're, we're going Trent, are, you the, are you drinking and smoking? Gummy. Yeah. What we're were you doing light. this weekend, Trent? Gummy, dummy, 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 dummy. We have found our dummy of the yeah. week. We have found our dummy of the week. Uh, listen, it's a holiday weekend, man. Holiday weekend. Where is your head? It is not in the game, that's for sure. You didn't we, even read the YouTube comments. You're you, supposed you, to... you, can't, you, you celebrate the Thanksgiving special by stabbing all of our listeners in the back? Listen, you're supposed to, you're supposed to also steer me in line here. Here's the guy who does the format for the show. I didn't see YouTube comments in the format for the show. I didn't see that on here. Dummy. Yeah. I didn't well, see that on well, I, I, I thought, I thought we had the routine down pat by now. Well, you know, and you, I forgot. And you forgot too. I think I'm blaming holiday weekend. It's the holiday weekend, man. We're we're off. We're we're relaxed. What can we say? All right. We'll but, read uh, last week's comments at the end of the show. How about that? Deal. That's a deal. All right. We'll 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 tie it up there. You know, that speak, speaking of comments, there was a great line by Eli Drake when he was spinning the uh, the thing. And Mackenzie Mitchell's like, oh, let's spin and make a choice. And he's like, no, 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 say it the right way. Spin the wheel and make the deal. Spin the wheel and make the deal. That's what I like to hear. And it's a total throwback to WCW, early WCW stuff, man. I uh, Anybody who caught that, that was a great little WCW. Uh, Old school na- battle bowl. Oh, dude, it was great. Spin the wheel, make the deal. Spin awesome. the wheel and make the deal. That's what I like to hear. Definitely popping. But uh, all right. So Alicia Edwards was for Team Fala. Right, and then uh, and, uh Cam and Fala tell Alicia the joke. Uh, what kind of music the Pilgrims listen to? It's uh, Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock. <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty good. She, it did not go over well though. They started. They loved it. I think Fala fell laughed. laughing. They got a laugh out of Trent. I love cheesy jokes, man. I love cheesy jokes. I'm a big fan of of, of cheese. But uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, I mentioned Katarina for for Team Drake. You know, and uh, she had a line, Kyle, which I thought I wrote down. It was about something about pilgrims. I can't remember the line, though. Do you recall what the line was? She she made a pilgrim reference. I can't remember what the damn line was, though. Do you remember? Now you're just embarrassing us, Trent. You, I know. You didn't take notes about something, and you're, you're actually you're acknowledging. You're acknowledging your laziness, and then you bring it up to me, and we just look like a bunch of schleps. So I, I looked at my Twitter just now because I did reference, I did make mention. I, all I said was the Pilgrim line by Katarina, and I tagged her, was hilarious. But I didn't put what the goddamn line was. How do I not do that? All right, Trent, what? because this is the holiday special, I'm letting you know now. This is okay. I'm, I'm letting all this slip. But if you ever do this again, Trent, that's it for you. Dancing oh. Mike is getting brought in. Oh, God. God, Impact Tribe, our lounge family, uh, dog me if you must. Give me a give it's me a break. The Thanksgiving though. special. We only have one match to talk about. It's okay. All it's right, all right, all right. Okay, Kyle. So then, uh, Team Fala had another pick there, Kyle. Another another pick for Team Fala. I'm I'm gonna get the picks out of the way. All right, we're gonna get the picks out of the way here. We had Desmond Xavier came in looking slightly stoned. Desmond Xavier on Team Fala. We we got you got your workhorse now in the team. You got your workhorse. In the uh, on Team Fala here, man, and then uh, the final pick for Team Drake, which popped me, dude, which popped me. It, it, it blew my mind. I see, I see Eli take the, take the paper. He unfolds it, and he's like, "What the? Is it Glenn, Glenn Gilbernetti?" And and he goes, "Hey, hey, hey! It's it's Glenn Gilberti, baby!" And he, I'm like, "Disco Inferno just walked in on my TV." 2018, the Disco Inferno, the guy, Kyle, the guy whose photos I have saved in my phone because when I cut my long hair, I said, oh, you know what's a perfect haircut? Disco Inferno's haircut. I legit have pictures of him saved in my phone that I'm going to take to the barber and say, cut my hair like this guy. Okay, we got a similar type of nose. Some more kind of head shape. I said, perfect. Well, that's that's a little creepy and weird there, Trent. I mean, I'm admitting I, it. You're you're complimenting the guy. You're calling him handsome or something. That is, that's nice. That's respectful of you. But handsome, man. A little creepy. Of all the people you're basing your uh, your fashion sense off of, you're going for the great disco inferno. 
Dude, Disco Inferno. I mean, he's got a good hairstyle, man. Have you seen his I'm hair? I'm glad also, Trent, that you're mentioning Disco Inferno and hairstyles here because uh, I wanted to ask you something. I, I've had this in my back pocket since day one. I, I didn't know when I was going to bust this out. I knew that someday Disco was going to get brought up and I was going to hit you with this on the podcast. I've waited a long time for this, Trent. Now, uh, I, I got I to ask you a question. Uh, I, I've heard some rumors. I don't know if they're true. You can confirm this for us, uh, true or false. Um, now, Trent, is it true that in the year 2000, when you were a young, diehard WCW fan, you were such a big fan of Disco Inferno back then that it inspired you to become a fan of disco music, and you got so into disco music that you had an afro. And I have a picture of this, and I'm putting it on the YouTube right now. Sorry, Trent. Disco fever, disco fever, disco fever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where the hell did you get a photo of this? Where did you get a photo of this? <laughs> you, have a, you, have, you have photographic proof something almost 20 years ago? Well, well, Trent, uh, clearly I spend my spare time uh, digging through your social media pages uh... for dirt. But, uh, here we go. This is this right here, folks. If you're watching us or listening to us on YouTube, you can see the picture. If if not, you're uh, on the RSS feeds. Get on the YouTube. Get on the Impact Lounge YouTube right now. Watch this video on YouTube, and you can see the picture. That is our pal Trent you're looking uh, at right now in the year 2000 with an afro. Where now, did now, you my, find this? Where did you first, find this? The first question on my uh, mind, Trent, is your hair is naturally very straight. How did it get so curly in this picture? I, was, I, there, was there a treatment you had to go through? Can I plead the fifth on this? Oh, did, did you put your geez. hair in curlers like a grandmother? Like, what happened? Look, look, guys, guys. Look, I, they got you know those you know those things at the salon, that little dome that the old the old, old ninnies sit under. You know the old grandmas are sitting under that dome thing and they're reading the paper and they're 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 clucking away about their their bullshit. No way. Oh, the perm dome. Perm dome. How the perm dome? Perm dome. Oh, no. It's the Millennium Perm Dome. That's what it was. Disco fever. Disco fever. Disco fever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe you did this to me, Kyle. I can't believe you did it. I'm sorry, Trent. Uh, I can't believe you did it. You know, well, you know what? I'm going to embrace God damn it. I'm a huge fan of Disco Inferno. I went through a huge disco phase. All right? Like my disco music. This is before the heavy metal. This is before. I mean, I was into, I was into metal. Man, that's where I'm so confused. You're you're in a metal band, listeners. If you're just coming around now, you don't know. Uh, we've talked about it a few times, but if you don't know, Trent is in a heavy metal band. He's in Hemi. So I was a little confused there. How does disco guy with an afro make I'm the not... transition to heavy metal frontman? Tell you tell you right now. With long you're... metal hair. Tell you right now. Tell you right. By the way, HemiMusic.com. That's H-E-M-I Music.com. Uh, at the time, there was no Hemi, right? There was two talking two thousand here, and I was a metal guy, and I started liking all sorts of different types of music. And I said, "Hey, let's try a different hairstyle." I'd cut my hair prior to this. My hair had been cut short after high school, and I was in that regrowing phase. And I was like, "Hey, let's get a little nuts. Let's get a little nuts." It didn't last long, but I got nuts, and then I grew it out long. And two thousand. Two ish, three, then the band started doing its thing, and then hey, it's been like that ever since. So, Disco Inferno was, uh, I love the guy. He got a great fashion sense. I, used to, I was a big mark for the fact that he had bell bottom wrestling tights. I thought that was great. And WCW, even now, I was like, this guy's so detailed. His, his wrestling tights are bell bottoms. Fantastic. Love Disco Inferno. Big fan, big fan of keeping it 100. And uh, the stuff he does with Vince Russo also on Lions, Tigers, Bears, and Disco. Big fan of him. He's a real intelligent guy. I believe Disco trained Killer Cross or was one of his trainers um, when Cross went to Vegas and uh, trained at uh, F FSW. I believe Disco was one of his trainers. Because I remember Disco putting him over for years. And... Um, and he was talking about Killer Cross, Kevin Cross, Kevin Cross, this. But uh, Disco, I believe, was one of his trainers. So Disco Inferno gets it, man. He's uh, he's a sharp dude. So I always loved him. So yeah, there goes the. Uh... Disco fever, disco fever, disco fever. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where that's where the 
that's where the uh, the history of my hair, that hair comes into play, my friend. So there Disco you go. Disco Inferno, man. Uh, great to see him on Impact. Uh, I, I loved how he claimed that he's there to win Scarlet. That's really what he's there for. He's there for Scarlet. I uh, thought it was funny how he told Eli that they're going to use CGI. That was class, good looks, and intelligence. <laughs> yeah, dude. And Disco that. tells Eli he's going to be the best man at his wedding because uh, <laughs> Disco and Scarlet are getting married. It was pretty funny. It was great. This goes yeah. great. I, honestly, Trent, I know, I know some maybe some uh, loungers. Tribe members might disagree with me here, but I'd like to see Disco hang around for a bit. You could use him on TV for comedy purposes. I he dude, he went all out. When and you don't when you don't have a Grado, you don't have a, a KM and Fala at the moment. You got a Disco Inferno. He's he's great for the comedy spots in the show. I, I would keep Disco around, and he's a relic of the old WCW. Why not? There's what? so many Nitro fans out there. Listen, Disco Inferno is is. He worked so hard at these tapings. He did. He was put everything out there, which I appreciated every second of that. The guy put so much out there, just his his reactions. He was hilarious. He was funny. Uh, the guy, I love him. How can you not like him? I love that everybody dogs him. Like his his buddies are all it's like the inside joke with all of his buddies, like you know Russo, Conan. Shane Helms, they all like their thing is to dog this. Everybody dogs them. Oh well, well, Jericho. you heard later on in the actual match, uh, Don Callis was just giving it to this. Oh, Don time. Callis, ripping him. I think he called him a douche at one point. But yeah, that was cool, man. So, and I just love, dude, the chemistry between Eli and Disco. Phenomenal. You got something there. You really got something. There. There's something there. There's something you can do later too. I mean, I hope this isn't it, because those two had some really good chemistry, man. They uh, they hit it off pretty well. That's not it for Disco, though, because uh, it, we get a quick uh, quick little uh, commercial here showcasing the Ultimate X match. We got a little yep. uh, history <laughs> lesson on Ultimate X. So when we go back to McKenzie, uh, you see Disco charging her, claiming that he invented Ultimate X, not Don Callis. This is a running jo- running debate uh, stemming from both guys' podcasts about who came up with the Ultimate X. And I think it's, it's an inside joke, which I think has a little bit of shoot element to it but they both lay claim to who invented the uh the ultimate x and i i remember seeing that the you know disco kind of making his claim on tv and i, I just tweeted i go he finally got redemption he finally got to say it live on tv <laughs> he finally got to make his claim you know on a show where don callis is on also and say no it's my idea it always has been my idea screw you callis what and i'm it, guessing Trent, is that uh it is just a guess uh I would say that maybe uh, this is back in the day when the creative meetings of TNA, from what I read, were really like Jarrett, Russo, uh, and Disco would sit in with Russo and uh, putting things down, you know, with him, JB, that crew. And uh, I'm thinking maybe Glenn, Disco Inferno came up with the Ultimate X concept and then on paper they had the character of Don Callis uh, introduce it to the television audience. Maybe that's what happened. Like, mm. Disco came up with the idea backstage, but when they were writing the show, they had Don Callis introduce it. So it's like, Don Callis has no reason to deny it because, you know, he's just saying what his character did. Yeah, yeah it could be. It could very, very well be. Who knows? Very well be. But, uh, but that was it. So great chemistry with him and Eli. So, yeah, the, our teams are set. Just to really quickly recap, Team Fala is Fala Ba, KM, Kiku Taro, Desmond Xavier, Alicia Edwards. Team Drake is Eli Drake, Jake Christ, Rohit Raju, Glenn Gilberti, a.k.a. Disco Inferno, and Katarina. Uh, accompanying Jake Christ is the OVE, and accompanying Rohit Raju is Chacha Gama and Junior Singh, who uh, Gama made mention. He said, hey, you, don't, you, you, get, you get Rohit, you get us all. So uh, there, there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of people in, around ringside come this main event but uh before the main event kyle there was an oath there was a turkey suit oath do you recall this did you did you you see this oh yeah that was awesome all the competitors involved had to put their hand on their heart and make an oath to wear the turkey suit if they are defeated in this episode if they are if you are the one who loses you have to take an oath to wear the turkey suit and it was just it was just funny as hell watching them all take this oath and uh and and do it it was i don't it, 
like they knew what I love is they knew this this episode was it was just meant to be light and fun. Like let's just go over the good, top. Good Thanksgiving time. Good over holiday the top. episode. Perfect. I mean, we're taking a suit to wear or an oath to wear a turkey suit, man. Come on. <laughs> let's just have a good time. But uh match gets underway. Right? Match gets underway and uh Things kick off, you know, we got, uh... No, 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 Trent, what how are you going to start talking about the main event without even mentioning that Scarlett shows up first? I'm getting, because she, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, because she didn't, they start some fighting first before she walks out. Okay, all right, I thought you were about to dive in and act like she she was never even a part no, of it. Oh, Jesus, God, I, look, I might, I might have been out of order on the picks, but for God's sake... When there's a Scarlet Bordeaux segment, you give me enough credit to know that she's going to get mentioned when she really comes. I mean, dude, she came out dressed as a sexy pilgrim. I mean, come for God's sake, give me some credit here. Well, well, Trent, you see what happens here? If you show just like a slight sign of not bringing your A game, I'm I'm all over your ass. Well, then that, that's where you, as my broadcast partner, has to come in and pick up my slack. That's well, I could just in. berate you on the show. That too. Should we put it out to the to, to the train back tribe? Do you, do you like it when Kyle berates me, or do you like it when Kyle picks up picks up the slack, and vice versa? I think I, I just I just like being like Chacha Gama and just slapping you upside the head, you know? Yeah. If this if this was in studio, he'd be slapping me upside the head. I think you need oh. a cane. You need some kind of cane to hit me with or something. Oh, I, I slapping you upside the head. Uh, that that's that's an understatement compared to me showing that disco picture about twenty minutes ago. Yeah. Right. Sorry about that. Oh, God. Guys, give me your thoughts on that. Give me your thoughts on the disco picture. I think you should bring the afro back, man. I thought that was a good look for you. No, no. The hair is getting cut, man. The hair is, is going. This is it. The, the hair is is leaving town on this on this run. So uh, soon, very soon. Uh, if you guys want to see a picture of the new improved haircut once that happens, let me know. We'll do, we'll but, do it before and after or something like that. Yeah, we'll do it we'll before. We'll do disco and then long hair and then after. But... Uh, Match kicks off, man, and then in the middle of the damn match, you know, we got some back and forth, you know, cross bodies, follows taking on some stuff. There's a uh, there's a centipede Boston crab at one point, and uh, do you know if you that was ridiculous because Cyrus says human centipede, and like, they're all they they're all like they all got some kind of you know they they're all locked up, and and then follow turns it into a, a centipede Boston crab, which is ridiculous, and then Scarlet comes out in the middle of the match. To continue her talent search, and everyone just pauses. Everyone just freezes. I mean, they're all locked in on the stage. Glenn smirk. I mean, this this goes money with the facial expressions. They're all eye contact there. Everybody just turns, and she's kind of laying around, and just uh, she's got a little her little throne up there, and she's looking like a million bucks. And oh boy. Everybody was distracted. Kid ref, kid ref, couldn't even concentrate on the match. He was locked in. He hit puberty. I noticed one thing. My buddy Bill Gardner, who's uh, who people might know as the EC3 jacket guy, and uh, now the Moose vest guy. He's uh, he's front row for every Impact taping. Uh, Bill Gardner was wearing a kid ref T-shirt at the show. And I told you, I said, you wore a kid ref T-shirt? What the hell? <laughs> Kid Ref has his own T-shirt. It's in the Nickelodeon font and logo, but it says Kid Ref. I don't know where the where the hell is he selling his T-shirts. Hey, man, that's what I want for Christmas—a Kid Ref T-shirt. Should we should the to the giveaway this month be a Kid Ref shirt? No, I mean, no, Trent. We're gonna <laughs> let the Impact Tribe pick what they want. All right, deal. <laughs> Kid Ref couldn't concentrate. They had to shake him loose from that spell that Scarlett had him on. But she Scarlett was a million bucks. She was just. Watching, you know, kind of giving that not impressed face, you know, looking around. Everybody keeps making eye contact with her, trying to uh, concentrate on the match, but at the same time watch her. But uh, <laughs> I remember at one point during the match, uh, Josh asks uh, asks Donnie, "What's your favorite Thanksgiving type food?" And John replies with vodka. That was probably my commentary line of the night. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's like vodka. Yeah, I, I I hear that one, Don. I know what that's like. <laughs> yeah, Kyle, Kyle feels you on that one, bud. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and the Rascals promo, me and my cousins cut before the Thanksgiving meal every year. Your cousin Rascals. Your, cousin, <laughs> your cousins the Rascals. Uh, it was, uh, anyway, back and forth, a lot of fun going on there. There were just... It, it was it was just goofy. It wasn't even like a traditional wrestling match, but it had a lot of those funny spots. Um, but the probably the best was they did the roll, the panda panda roll, but not just follow doing it on Glenn Gilberti. Everybody did it on the Disco Inferno. Disco got rolled by everybody, and that was just hilarious. Even even who you want to mention who who even got in on that roll, Kyle Kid Ref. Kid Ref. Kid Ref even got it on the roll. At and that point, you might as well lift up the guardrail and let people from the crowd hop in and start rolling on them, you know? It would have been funny. Actually, it would have been hilarious if they if fans started started rolling. But uh um there might be a liability issue there, Kyle. <laughs> can't, can't be having fans rolling in because you might you might get that one fan who just, you know, goes a little too far. Too hyped to be in there. And god damn it, if anyone's gonna if, if they're gonna let fans in the ring. That that's a, that's that's a segment I need to be in. That segment I deserve to be in after all the dedication to Impact Wrestling I have done. But anyway, oh, uh, good for you. Good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I'm looking. I'm looking at a stack of damn DVDs over here, man. You know. No. By the way, nobody. Nobody said they want to see a, a picture of the collection. Not not one. Not one member of the Impact Tribe said, "Yeah, show us a picture of the stuff." Nobody. I want a video, Trent. I, I want you to make a video uh, running us through the collection because you do own every single TNA slash Impact Wrestling DVD ever released from yes. the rare ones to the one night onlys to the pay-per-views, everything. You have everything. So I, I don't want to open up a can of worms here and go on a long tangent here, but you need to make a video. You got to introduce us to the library. You definitely I need to make a video. I need more than just you to, to, to demand it, Kyle. I mean, I love Impact you. And Lounge, also. tribe, listeners, get on this guy's case. We, we want to see the, the collection. Let's hear from the people. Because if they don't say it, I mean, I, like I said, I love you, Kyle. I'll do it for you. But i like to know what the demand is. People really want it. They, do they really care what I got here? But uh, let me know. Let me know, guys. But anyway, guys, a lot of back and forth. And... Like I said, Kid Ref got in on this. But then the win came when Falaba squashed Glenn Gilberti with a uh, basically a bonsai drop, panda drop, and uh, took the win. So Glenn Gilberti is the loser of the second annual Eli Drake Gravy Train Turkey Trot, and he must wear the turkey suit. But he's breaking his oath, Kyle. He broke his oath. He tried leaving. He refuses to wear it. He's trying to leave when Fala, you know, Team Fala stopped him. But then Scarlet gets up there. And she goes up and up to him, and she gives him the look and the and the eye eyeballs up and down. And she says, uh, she wants him to put the suit on because she's there's there's nothing sexier than that. And he looks at her and he he says, yeah, all right, whatever you want. And uh, he puts it on all excited because he's like, I'm gonna get Scarlet, and this is it, and this is the way to her heart and. Oh man, he's the best at the facial expressions. Oh, he's hysterical. He's a great character. And, For a uh, guy that hasn't worked TV in like twenty years, he has a misty, no rust on him. The guy is still hysterical. Glenn Gilbert, he just he gets it, man. He gets it. If this isn't proof enough that the guy gets it, uh, if you don't think he gets it, you don't get it. How about that? But. Uh, she she watches it. He puts it on. He's smiling. He thinks he's gonna get her. And she looks at him and goes, "He looked like an idiot." And the crowd pops. She walks out. End of the episode. They do a little <laughs> plug for the uh, Ultimate X coming up. But that's it. Yeah, that was it. I just love how they left him standing there, just looking like a moron. The picture that made its rounds was great. Is that photo? <laughs> yeah, amazing. He had that look on his face, like yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> but uh, it was it was great, man. He, uh, I love that he, Disco doesn't mind poking fun at himself. The guy is, takes it all in great stride. He's just a talk about a great dude to have as a part of your team. And uh, keeping a one hundred, keeping a one hundred is great. You know, I don't know if I told you guys. I don't know if I told you, Kyle, I'm, Hemi, my band, HemiMusic.com, Facebook.com slash Hemi Music. Uh, my band Hemi is a two-time uh, winner. Of the Hoovy seal of approval 
Ooh. on keeping it 100. Ooh. Two times. We've been on Not there. bad. Not bad. We've been on two to two of our songs have been played on keeping it 100. Unanimous decisions to give it the Hoovy seal of approval. Glenn even got it on. He's like, oh, I like them. They're remind me of old school Metallica or something. So he got it on too. They all liked it, man. We were we were really put over. I I want to give a shout to uh tout to that team for for doing that. Not once but twice, especially Joe Joe Feeney. Jay Feeney, their uh, their producer and one of the guys on the show. He's basically he's like their Kyle, Kyle. Joe Feeney. He's the guy who edits everything. He's he's the guy. He made sure we got on there and then uh so yeah, Glenn Glenn put me over. I'm going to put Glenn over. That's what I'm getting at here. Disco likes me. I like Disco. All right, fair enough. Good for you. Good for you, Trent. Good for, Good for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing pat, it. Pat yourself on the back. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if people want to pat me on the back, they can go get a download of that latest album at uh, hemimusic.com or iTunes and uh, anywhere downloads are sold. Anyway, Kyle, what else we got, man? That's uh, so That was it. They basically gave then they, and like I said, they ended it with a hype for the Ultimate X coming back. So we're going to get more into that deeper. Next week's episode is looking real thick, though. Uh, Rascal's debuting. Jordan Grace and Katarina. It's going to be a thick episode next week amongst everything else. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, this week, though, Trent, uh, it was really just like a break from your regularly scheduled programming. Uh, Absolutely. It, it was a fun holiday special. Uh, there's only one match, like we said a million times, just one match. Uh, the entire episode just built up towards this one match. Uh, I didn't mind it, though. No, it was mind. fun. It didn't, you know, it's weird because. It's got to be hard to fill time for one match, and they did it quite well. Uh, the promos were great. It was fun. Uh, I mean, obviously, the match felt more important because they spent the entire episode building up towards it, but uh, I, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed how they had the little promos building it up the whole time. I liked how they did a lot of stuff for Homecoming. They did a hell of a job promoting Homecoming. Uh, every single commercial break, they had not just commercials, but just uh, – little specific vignettes like you had brian cage talking about option c you had the ultimate x uh there's so much good stuff in there um but this was a fun episode trent uh there's really not that much to say uh, a lot of websites didn't even put up results for it a lot of podcasters didn't even do their weekly podcast review for it but i mean it's impact wrestling this is the impact lounge you're the impact tribe and we're kyle and trent so we weren't just going to skip out on it. We had to talk about it. We had to come around and hang out with you guys like we do every week. Hey, listen, I, here's what I look at. People are like, you guys going to skip this week because it's a holiday? And we said, fuck no, we're not going to skip this week because it's a holiday. This is still a goddamn episode of Impact Wrestling. And, dude, our, our the Impact Lounge and our Impact Tribe has been so damn welcoming to us. You think we're going to leave them hanging for two weeks? Hell fucking no, man. Can't we're giving you every week. Every Can't week. Can't do it. Can't do it. If Impact's on, we're watching it. Guys, we're even looking to find ways to get you even more content. Let's put it that way. I'm, we're trying to fill in in between the week, do pay-per-view reviews, throwback shit. We're working on a lot of stuff. So oh, yeah. if you guys want more, let us know. We're, we're bringing more. That's the idea. Oh, 2019 yeah. is going to be a lot more stuff. All right. And you know what, Trent? Uh, before I do my top five, you know, we like to close with our top five. Uh, how about you, you can be uh, nice enough to – Read last week's YouTube comments. You want to do that right now, Trent? And then I'll I do can, my top five. I How's can that do sound? That. I can. I think the, the fans have been. Uh, they've been good to us. They've been good to us, and we got to be good to them. So I'm going to go ahead and read those off to the, the folks here. So let's kick it off with uh, Richard Cartledge said he really thought Sammy was going to win the match, if not the title. I also hate the fact that Brian Cage is cashing in option C, but I do like adding more traditional X Division guys. I also love the fact. That homecoming is going to be broadcast from the asylum. Couldn't agree more with him. Rich Richard makes a really good point. Kyle, I'm I'm still bummed that 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 Sammy didn't take it. I feel like he should have taken it. What do you think? I know we talked about it, but you know. Well, you I'm think? sticking to it that he didn't need it. I, I don't think he needs it. Uh, but I, I get I get it. I know he deserved it. He totally deserved it, and he should have got it. But he didn't need it. He, he doesn't walk away looking like weaker or anything. Yeah, true. Uh, Autobus Maximus said, I can only agree with the comments on Johnny Impact. The guy is the weakest draw they have. Typical XWWE guy can't speak in a straight line without a script and looks like a fucking gymnast in the ring. I do like Cross a lot, though. It looks dangerous all the time, and that's how it should be. 
He was a good part of their match. He was the only good part of their match last week, and he owned Johnny on the mic in this episode. Can't I cannot disagree. Johnny is, is a very talented athlete, but he doesn't have the the speaking charisma to be a the hood ornament of the company to me. I just don't see it, man. What do you think, Kyle? Ah, uh, you, you're probably right. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to beat on our champion. I really don't want to do. I that. don't want either. I don't want to, but I don't think he's. We have to be honest. We have to be honest. Yeah. We, can't, we can't lie. We can't sugarcoat things. I mean, I we're big impact everything. marks. We love the show. We usually we usually love the entire show. We're very enthusiastic fans, Trent. But yeah, I, Johnny Impact, great look. I, I think he's good in ring. I. I think uh, it's a little much to say he's just an acrobat. I, I think he is very skilled. Uh, he really does remind me of a, a Rob Van Dam. But uh, when it comes to carrying the, the promos, man, uh, pushing the story on the microphone, it's just that's not his strong thing. That's not it's not his thing. Just traditionally, you know, heel champions always have a better – have a better presence because the chase of the face is way, way more appealing. Johnny chasing it from Aries was better than him winning it. That's how I feel. I like Johnny better when he was chasing. So, anyway, uh, next one. Distiller85 says he likes to show an order. They always found it odd to start with the main event. I may listen. I think we had a, we not only Distiller, but a lot, a couple other guys were mentioning that they liked it in order. So, we might, we're going to go back to the in order. We're going to take that up with Big Boss BQ, let him know that, hey, the people have spoken, and we're going to go in order. But uh, a couple other people, Cardi Nation is one of them. They corrected me that Seidel and Johnny was non-title last week. That was my fault, guys. I thought it, I thought they had mentioned us for the title. Mm. It was non-title. Mm. Another no, Trent mistake, huh? Another Trent mistake. This, mm. this, what, a, what, a, what a lousy week. Mm. I'm having a rough week here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Colby Cooper came in with a different perspective. He said that I think people are too harsh on Johnny Impact. He needs a better finisher, but he has some very good matches in his time with Impact. And he's more over with the internet fans, more over than the internet fans like you to believe. He isn't the best talker, but the casual fans eat his stuff up regardless. Good point. I, That's the internet the thing, fans. Trent, Trent, you were there at Bound for Glory. You were there standing uh, right next to me, kind of. You were a few feet away from me. Uh, the crowd was behind Johnny Impact. They were. Now, okay, hang on. Counterpoint. Were they behind him because they like him, or were they behind him because they hated Aries? Consider that now, because Aries did a lot building up to that to really get, get heat. Mm. So, could be one or the other. I know he's over, though. Like, I see him at Indies and stuff. I see him at Indies. And, dude, people love him. You know, the women love him. He's a good-looking guy. But I just don't see him as the guy. If I'm flipping channels, he's not the guy Guy catching my eye. A guy like Killer Cross catches my eye. Johnny Impact, not so much in terms of, like, if I'm just casually walk, walking by. But he is. I can see from a company standpoint, the guy's clean cut. He looks like a million and a half dollars. He can, he can work. Uh, he is a great representation of your company if you're putting. But, you know, I think. If you're doing that, then put him out there. Send him off to some of those promotional events. Have him travel as the champion to other promotions. I mean, have him defend the title in different promotions. The problem is he's really too he's really busy. But like I think Johnny should be taking that belt to other places. I mean, you want to show off your champion. If he's that if he's got that good of a look, then show him off. That's what it's gotta be, man. But uh Colby Cooper also said he loves the Eli Drake storyline. He's you know, the whole going against hardcore and flippy. He asks us. Do we think it cultivates in a match with Eddie Edwards at homecoming? I don't think so. I think uh, putting Eddie and Eli wouldn't do much for me. I could be wrong. Maybe maybe it is. But I feel like uh, I don't really know where they're going with it. I don't know where they're going to go with it. I hope I know he's got Tommy Dreamer next week. I hope that's the end of the Tommy Dreamer thing. But I don't know who who could be next. What do you think, Kyle? Where do you like you like where Eli's going so far? Yeah, I mean, it's it's got to end in one brutal, violent uh, Monsters Ball match. I don't know if it's going to be with Abyss. I don't know if it's going to be with Tommy Dreamer. I don't know who it's going to be with, but I have a feeling this is all going to end up in a nice, bloody, brutal, violent, unsafe work environment filled Monsters Ball match. All right. Yeah, in the asylum. That'd be great. 
Uh, Dancing Mike came in came in hard. We got to read his comments. It's a little longer one, but we got to read Dancing Mike's here. Kyle, we you know we we seem to be having a back and forth on pizza. I love Dancing Mike. Dancing Mike says, "Let's put PizzaGate 2.0 to rest here. There is no such thing as Tennessee pizza that I know of. I've had both Chicago and New York style." I Damn prefer- right. He's admitting it. Admitting it right off Jump Street. He Good also stuff. says, "Well, he says he prefers a thin, crispy crust." But pizza's like sex. Even when it's not the best, it's still good. Parentheses, he says, I just realized I might have triggered a sound effect there. So basically, okay. Dancing Mike is saying, put a drop in right there. Put he some loves of your... the boing. Uh, he also says uh, he knows BQ started doing the main event first, but uh, you can see the logic in it. But he thinks we should go. He, he says, yeah, we should do what the head honcho wants, but he prefers chronological order as well. So, uh but uh, he says, but that might just be because I'm a big dummy. Yeah. Dummy. Yeah. But uh, he's also excited about Cage going for the big belt because he thinks he thinks they'll actually let him take it off of Johnny. And uh, sadly, he says he's the part of Tennessee that he's in is about three hours away, and he has a job, so he won't be able to make it for that show, which sucks. That's pretty close to him. He, uh, oh, forget your job. Yeah, screw the job. Yeah, screw working. <laughs> screw your livelihood. Yeah. Your source of income. Get to the wrestling show. He says, I also think this new Matt Seidel could be a viable champ. He's added some higher impact and submission moves to his offense since becoming a heel. And his finisher is actually accurate and packs a wallop. Unlike a swanton or a starship lame, he calls it. I like that. Starship lame. Uh, Plus, he could have Ethan on the outside for support slash interference. General heel dickishness. He's also good on the mic, which is important. So I think it could work. I agree. I actually had a long conversation with Matt Seidel last night at AAW, and uh, the guy's got a presence, and the women love him, too. Every girl in the audience went and got a picture with Matt Seidel yesterday. It was phenomenal. I think he could be one of those guys that brings brings the girls to the to the show, man. Matt Seidel. Uh, I, I don't know if I, I'd say it like that, though, because I don't know if you, you, that's the guy you want to attract people, like, in that sense. Uh because I think his character right now as a heel with the, the third eye, this is the best work he's done throughout his entire career. But I don't know if that could translate into a, a babyface position and still I, still no, have, have that character. He'd have to stay a heel. I don't see a babyface. He'd have to be a heel. But uh, heel or not, the women, the chicks love him. It's a thing. The women love him. Hey, so. Sometimes the chicks can't resist the, the bad guys too in wrestling, you know? That's true. Uh, he also thinks we need Fala as, and Cam as tag champs. Totally agree. Love your reviews. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Dancing Mike, thank you for that amazing feedback. That was great. Keep on dancing, Mikey. Keep on dancing. Your buddy Whoopsie, Long Island's very own, Whoopsie. says that he, the thing I like about the different taping locations is that wrestlers are received differently. In New York, Eli was received like a like the dummy savior, as you guys know. But in Vegas, I don't think anyone cheered for him. He was getting the heat. Uh, he says, I prefer New York crowds in wrestling, but sometimes they're too smart for their own good. 100% agree. It's just like so Chicago. True. So true. Uh, Vegas crowds seem like it had more kids and casual fans, which is great. Totally agree. I am uh, the crowd. I had this conversation yesterday with somebody. Crowds by town differ, and that is true. Chicago, sure. New York, smarks. Vegas, small towns, uh, they're there for the fun. They're there for the show. But uh, let's see. And. Um, AK Infamy, Infinity, sorry, says he's from Houston, but he lives in Dallas now. So if Impact ever came down, he's going to make that drive. And uh, he said he went to a ROW show. I think maybe, I don't know if he meant ROH, but ROW show. ROW, that's uh, Reality of Wrestling. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I believe Booker T is a promoter of that one. Oh, that's the Booker T one. Okay, I'm sorry. I totally I had forgotten that that was the uh, Reality of Wrestling. Okay. He said they tore the house. You didn't have to know that, so I'm not berating you. It's okay. Well, I should know that because I mentioned I mentioned Houston, Texas as one of the towns they should go to, partner with Booker T, and I didn't know the name of his promotion, so I botched on that shit too. That's Jesus, right. he said they tore the house down. He's excited for just a, you know, even if it's just a fantasy. So hey, we'll see what happens. One more comment. Cardi Nation got the answer right to my trivia. I think the faction that formed is the original main event Mafia post Bound for Glory 2008. He did not remember the exact date though. Uh, but he is right. It was the main event mafia, and uh, he was he was te- it was on October twenty third, twenty eleven. That's when that, that happened. I'm sorry. Uh, that was the last time uh, 
they were there was 2011. But um, so I don't know why he said post not the post BFG 2008. I'm sorry, wait, I'm I'm off on that date. But you yeah, smoking was, Trent, you smoking my weed? My bad, I put 2011. But no, it was uh, you dipping it, into my stash, man. I guess so. Maybe I am. My bad on that. I'm sorry, wrong date there. But it was the main event mafia. I uh, you you got it right there, my friend. Cardination, you got the right answer. And uh, good call on that. It was the main event mafia. So that was uh, a Vegas taping that they were at there, man. But they formed on October twenty third, two thousand eight. So sorry, I put twenty eleven in my in my count, but it was two thousand eight. I remember that episode very well. I actually brushed up on it before I um, before I uh, put that uh, trivia question out, and it was just cool to watch it again. So that was a, a Vegas taping as well. I believe at that time it was only one one episode, maybe two. They did a small run. But uh, I was at Bound for Glory 2000, uh, 2008, and it was right after that where they formed it. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool. But, uh, but yeah, man, so he got that right. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Miguedro, love this. Welcome back, guys. And uh, let's see. Christopher Rayburn pointed out that Matt Seidel had title shots against Eli Drake last year in the Jim Cornette phase, which was kind of a forgotten phase at times. So thanks for pointing that back out to us, Chris. Appreciate that. And then he also mentioned the title versus title he had against Austin Aries, which, yes, I definitely remember that one. Uh, that was kind of an odd one to throw out when they did, but it was a good match. I do recall that. Uh, I said, this match on Impact doesn't count because it was non-title. Again, they pointed out to me it was a non-title match. That was my fault. Uh, Mir Neesom had a shot for you. Kyle, he says, keep up the good work. P.S. I never smoke a day in my life. He's never smoked. Oh, good for you. But I mentioned to him. Hey, I said, you know what, Mir? Me too. I never smoked a day in my life either. Where I said, we're good. I saw. I told him we leave that to Kyle. I said, yeah. I never either. I leave that yeah, to part that to you. me. More weed for me, baby. Eddie Peligro says, uh, prefer the review in order. Leave the main event at the end. You got it, sir. Whoopsie, whoopsie. Took a shot at Tennessee Pizza. He says, I bet the best pizza in Tennessee comes from CeCe's. Oh, oh. dancing Mike and whoopsie need to have a, a the the battle bowl here, man. The CeCe's. battle bowl. <laughs> Oh, I can't five hour pizza, man. <laughs> That's a hell of a deal. All right. We're going to close out with one last comment by Ro. One the last Great. comment. Ro, our fellow Impact Lounge family. Hey. Ro, Ro, Ro's been pretty great about promoting us, man. I got to give a thank you, Ro, for putting us out there all the time. He says, I think Cage stating he wasn't going to do option C only to do it. If the point of being the exhibition champ is to get you the opportunity to cash in, then what's the purpose of being champ? Well, with that said, X Division really needs an identity, and this gives it a chance now that it's vacated. Really good point. Really good point. What do you think about that, Kyle? Uh, it's a very good point from the row, man. And uh, you know what? Option C has had criticism since the day it was introduced. That criticism is always going to follow it. As long as long as there is an option C, there is going to be criticism. I was, as I mentioned before, as much as I love Cage, him being the exhibition champ did no favors to that division. I don't think it defined the division at all. And uh, I, I do agree with Roe. Now that it's up in the air, you have a chance to kind of hit the reset and really lock in what this division means. All right, guys, thanks for all those comments. That was great. Keep them coming on this one as well. And um, put them out there. As you see, we read them and we talk about them. So, all right, with that... I'm kicking it over to Kyle for his top five of the week. Kyle, take it away. I'm going to list off the top five. Yeah. The top five. Yeah. I'm going to give you the countdown like Casey Casey, my rebuttal. Yeah. The top five. Yeah. The top five. All right, Trent, I've got my top five this week. A uh, bit of a warning here. Um, I recall a while ago I had mentioned to you, Trent, that I was going to do this as a top five eventually, and – you shot it down and said, no, no, don't do that. I don't think that's a good idea, but I'm going to do it anyway, Trent. Uh, you might not remember, but this week, the top five is going to be the top five nicest knockout booties of all time, Trent. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's right. The top five nicest knockout booties of all time. All about the butts. We're ranking down the asses. You're a, you're a, you're a pig. You're a male, you're a male chauvinistic pig. You couldn't, you, you weren't going to do knockout matches. You, you weren't even, you could have even done knockout outfits for God's sake. Oh, hold on. <laughs> all right, Trent. 
we'll get there. I, I have other top fives picked out. We're going to do top five best knockout champions, best knockout feuds. We'll get there to those. I just happened to get to this one first. You know what? Look, look. all right. Clearly, you're an ass man. So, uh, I mean, like like Cosmo Kramer. Remember when he was the ass man? You remember that episode? <laughs> yeah, of course I do. <laughs> Cosmo Kramer, the ass man. So that's going to be you. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Everything. Proctology. <laughs> you know, Trent, right. when you talk about the knockouts division, you're talking about booties. You're talking about big butts. And Easter. I just, I had to compile five of the greatest. Now, this is my choice. These are my picks. If you disagree with me and I, you feel like I've committed a crime by leaving out your favorite knockout booty, please impact tribe in the comments. Let me know. Sound off. But I'm going to kick this off like this, Trent. Number five, Velvet Sky. Velvet Sky. Let the pigeons loose. The Velvet Sky. That's right, Trent. One of the hottest knockouts of all time. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to put her as one of the fiercest competitors, one of the, you know, most skilled in-ring athletes when it comes to the knockouts. But she sure was one of the hottest, and she sure drew big crowds. Probably sold some of the most merch in Knockouts history. If you go to any convention, you still see people lining up to the door to get her autograph. The great Velvet Sky. And man, does she have a great ass. Bully Ray is a very lucky man. You are going to get so much uh, so much debate on ranking her at number five, though. I can see it now. 100%. You're going to get so much hey, debate hey, on that. My picks. My picks. Uh, I, I'm, all, I'm only ranking the booties here. You know, I, I feel like she's out of all of the knockouts we could have picked. And, man, are there a lot of booties to choose from. You have to understand, Trent, it was very hard to compile this into a top five. But number five is Velvet Sky. I, I feel like she's, she's number five. She's a number five. Um, so, yeah, Velvet Sky, number five. Uh, any, anything else, Trent, or should I move on? Right, real quick, is this is this all in reference to uh, Sienna, former Impact uh, Knockouts champion? Sienna has done a what she's calling the "free the cheeks" movement, and she's posting a couple <laughs> booty shots on her Twitter. Hey, I gotta saying, go check those out after this. I didn't phenomenal. know about that. She's putting out booty shots. She goes, "Free the cheeks, be proud." Of you. She goes, "Girls, be proud of your asses." That's right. So, that's right. Be proud reference. of your asses. I'm not a pig. I'm not a bad guy. Well, I'm be proud of your asses. We we are we are Sienna ass, ass so. pride. Hashtag ass pride. Ass pride. Hashtag free the cheeks. This is part of Sienna's movement. She's starting to be proud of your butts. But all right, right go on. Number four. Right, well, what do you got? Unfortunately, number four is not Sienna. Sienna did not make this list. The number four nicest knockout booty of all time, Trent, going to Rebel. Rebel. The former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader Rebel. That's right. And boy, does she have some cheeks. She, her entrance to this day, that, that rope split thing she would do, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. And it, it, it shows off her booty. It highlights it. Uh, so the, the number four nicest knockout booty of all time, going to Rebel. Moving along with the list here. Number three, a little more present day, a little more modern. Number three has got to be the smoke show, Scarlet Bordeaux. That is a booty, all right. That is definitely a booty. That is uh that's got its own that's got its own uh, identity, man. That thing yeah, is mind of its own. Unreal. Unreal. I, I she hasn't worn it in uh, impact yet, but I, I've seen what she wears in ring on her indie dates. You know the exact piece of clothing I'm talking about. And boy does it highlight her cheeks. Oh yeah. I mean she works for us at AW, so uh I see it. And it is definitely a, a great deal. It is a great, it's a hell of a deal. Hell of a deal, as the old timers say. That'll draw a crowd, all right. That'll that'll draw your AAW indie crowd. Yep. Oh, yeah. But selling extra hot dogs when Scarlet Ford goes on the phone, for sure. <laughs> for it's, sure. It's, gets a little damp in the room when that happens. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, Moving along here, Trent. The number two nicest knockout booty of all time. Number two, she's new. She's a rookie, but man, her ass just speaks for itself. Kira Hogan, number two. Kira Hogan. She's a, she's a newcomer, but she's already ranked pretty high on that list. She's, oh, yeah. 
She, wow, all right. Oh, yeah, she, hey, she's got that black girl booty. That thing is monstrous. Tremendous strength. M monstrous. She, uh, funny you mention that, too. That, that somebody, mentioned, somebody actually talked about Kira Hogan's booty at the AW show last night, too. Oh, yeah. She's got a booty you could park a car on, Trent. She knows it, too. She puts it out there. She knows oh, yeah. it. Oh, she yeah. Oh, yeah. But, uh, all right, Kira Hogan. All right, number one. Number, number one. Number one, Trent. The number one nicest knockout booty of any and all time. Trent, I think you know. I think the Impact Lounge knows. <sighs> do, you, do you have any idea, Trent? We're, we're, all wait, we're all waiting in suspense here, Kyle. What do you got? Drum roll me. All right, here we go. Drum roll is... Brooke. Brooke. That's right, Trent. The number one nicest knockout booty of all time, Brooke Tessmacher. Oh, my God. She knew it, too, man. She still she knows knew it. it. New mother of two, and she still makes sure you remember that booty on her Instagram. Follow her on Instagram. I think it's real Brooke Adams. She puts it out there, and she lets you know. Don't forget Don't forget this. This is the money. She, lets, she still puts it out there. Legendary knockout booty. I, I got I got to give it to her. The number one nicest knockout booty of all time. When you look up booty in the dictionary, you look up that definition. There's a picture of Brooke right next to the word. She is uh, she's a she's a hell of a talent, hell of a wrestler, beautiful young lady. But oh my, does she have a booty? Does Brooke, she have a booty, Trent? Brooke is working with uh, with the full deck on that one. Oh yes. Oh, no yes, and, and also she's got that little thing in her entrance to highlight it when she gets on the rope. But notice that all the nicest booties do that on the ropes. They know it. That's because they know it. They know exactly that they have, what their oh, assets are. That's the, asset. that's, the best, that's the best part of the cameraman's job. No, you know, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. No. no kidding. So real quick, I'll just uh, go along. Uh, real quick, I'll just go over these again. That is... The top five and nicest knockout booties of all time, Trent. Number five, Velvet Sky. Number four, Rebel. Number three, Scarlet Bordeaux. Number two, Kira Hogan. And number one, Brooke Tessmacher. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. So there it is, guys. If you have uh, any ones to debate Kyle on, leave them in the comments. Ones that you think he forgot. And if you were, if you were, could do a, if you could do a six to ten, if you're doing a top ten, who would you add to that list, guys? Throw that on there. Let Kyle know. All right, Kyle, let me get the plugs in here. I think we are going to let these people go on this holiday episode. I'm going to let people know where to find us, guys. Check us out at We Talk Impact on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Type in We Talk Impact on the search. The Total Nonstop Impact uh, accounts will come right up. Give us a like, follow, subscription. Take a look. Connect with us on all these platforms here you can also find this podcast on the run if you're not listening on youtube uh, via the impact lounge you can also find it via the regular feed on apple itunes stitcher soundcloud google play tune in radio iheart radio and now spotify rate review subscribe let us know what you think tell a friend tell an enemy tell a co-worker tell your mother i told my mother about it she wants to get into podcasting and listen to start listening to our podcast now because of this um but yeah put, spread the word around guys give us a rating on all these let us know what you think we want to we all feedback is what we re, we get off on the feedback guys so get us all the feedback you can get our rocks off get our rocks off so that's where you can find us on all those platforms first crack though goes to the impact lounge on youtube which is our host and our partner via the Impact Lounge, which is the number one source for Impact Wrestling news and discussion. So connect and with Afro. and number my one source Afro. for Trent's Afro. Only place you're going to see it. Only place. <laughs> uh, that is not going to be going at the We Talk Impact uh, Instagram. No way. No, I was thinking about making the display picture, you know, oh God. No, across, no. across the social media no. channels. That, that, that's how bad things happen to people. <laughs> but, uh, but no, that won't be happening. But guys, connect with us on there. We are looking like we're wrapping this up here. So thanks for joining us on what we thought was going to be a short Thanksgiving episode. But, hey, it turned out to be a regular-sized episode because we love to talk. This is like this is your Impact Wrestling Zoo radio show, guys. So you get us going. We'll, we'll keep talking. But thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back with 
this next week's Impact episode. We'll be reviewing that on the Impact Lounge and all the platforms. Kyle, is there anything else I missed? Enjoy your turkey leftovers, people. I still got some, too, so I'm going to get some right, right now. Late night eats. See you guys. We'll see you next week. Disco fever. Disco fever. Disco fever.